a young man was taking a religious studies exam at the Oxford nearly two centuries ago. He and his fellow classmates had been asked to write about the spiritual significance of the miracle of Jesus converting water into wine. For two hours, all the other students went on writing and scribbling a lot of things. And towards the end, the examiner noticed that this one student did not write anything. So the examiner went up to this student and asked him, you better start writing the exam or you're going to fail. The young man who happened to be Lord Byron took up his pen and wrote only one line. The line went, the water met its master and blushed. I'm sure as those masters, many a times the topic needs the right person and blushes to its best red. Today, each and every one of us sitting here, we are here only to see better ways to make the blushing happen more. My job today is to introduce a teacher or a trainer who made many lives blush in his presence in their life. I'm going to mono act a bit. VTV Prasad Rao from KV Tirupati. His physics teacher was the man who gave us this great teacher. And PTV Prasad taught our speaker today a perfect lesson, a very perfect lesson which said, if he has to teach physics to Ramu, he has to know Ramu and he also needs to know physics. With this, do I need to speak more? This great personality has the trainer in him. Now, is the other interesting part. He has studied in Chennai, Kannur, my hometown, Oliver Court, and Hubli. I think this has covered good part of the District 121. So he's no one outsider to District 121. He is there. And when he said Kannur in one of his speeches, I said, which means this is my Kannur guy. Lydian Chandal Kumar lovingly called CK with the positive attitude which comes from his A-positive blood. He's a civil engineer and a trainer by choice. CK has a credit of training and speaking across the globe and he has been to more than 17 countries with many Fortune 500 companies as clients. He has trained at the Harvard Law School on teaching negotiation in organization and trained by the renowned Dr. Robert Caldini, if I have pronounced it right, on influencing skills. TED Talk spe TEDx speaker and visiting faculty at very different business schools in and abroad, inside the country and outside too. Going through his assignments, I feel privileged introducing him. He addresses the MBAs at Wharton Business School in Philadelphia, and he was the keynote speaker at the Roshtri International Conference in Bangkok, Thailand, and DTAC in 2013, and which was in Dubai, and DTAC 2017 Bahrain. And for all of us who do not know what DTAC is, DTAC is the annual conference of those masters of D20, comprising UA, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Jordan, Lebanon, and Qatar. He has also been our guest at Coronation 2017 in Mysore, and the district, uh, the, the district con conference of D92 comprising Karnataka and Kerala. So this 22 year, 23 year old Toastmaster, the founder president of Smedley Speaker Society, T Toastmasters Club in Bangalore, and he sponsored, mentored more than 12 Toastmaster clubs. With a lot of love, respect and envy, let me present before you a passionate public speaker Penman blogger, a whimsical writer, compulsive traveler, snapper par excellence. Please check his Instagram handle and uh, aspiring humorist. Over to you, sir, for your session today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naveen. Am I audible? Is this volume okay? Okay, great. 
you know, I was so engrossed in your introduction that I really wanted to meet this person myself. I must compliment you on the level of research. You didn't simply read out my uh, CV, but you picked certain anecdotes and uh, that shows your professionalism. Thank you so much. Wonderful. So with that, and uh, thanks a lot for those effusive words, Purachi Talavi Vanita Rangarajan Avargale. So she is really leading your district with so much of panache. I think uh, this is just an understatement if I call her uh, Purachi Talavi. Okay. Now I did my engineering in MIT Manipal, which I, I, uh, I make it a point to say this in every Toastmasters meeting. In my second year, we had a very difficult maths paper. One of my friends went to the professor and said, he was dismayed at his marks card. And he said, I don't think I deserve a zero in this paper. The professor said, I too think so. But this is the lowest mark I'm allowed to get. I can't go any further down. Now, it was not me. Nitasha is looking at me. No, it was not me. It was my friend. So this was what we call as a witty retort or a quick silver reply, which can sometimes enliven the proceedings. It can also make it very joyful or it can also show your self-esteem. And Toastmasters has institutionalized this by including table topics as an essential uh, feature of uh, public speaking. And while I've been asked to speak on how to prefer, prepare for the contest, definitely yes. But I will also give some tips for any Toastmaster to excel in table topics. Because in my opinion, I gauge the standard of a Toastmasters club on three parameters. The quality of their project speeches, the level of table topics, and of course, the evaluations. Now, when I say quality of table topics, I would rather give some points higher to this because any seasoned speaker can come and prepare and give a speech based on a text, but spontaneity is something that eludes even some of the greatest speakers. That's why they dread taking part in the table topic session because they feel all the reputation that they built up is crumbled because of a poor response. But if you get better, there's nothing like this. Now, one of my minor credentials to talk about table topics is, I was the winner of the first ever table topics contest conducted by this community when we were all together in, of course, it was not as grand as uh, what is being done now, but in Yavanika, an auditorium on Ripatanga Road. And you know, you had these uh, timers kept in the, on stage, which the audience could see. And the podium was diagonally placed so that I was facing the audience and I could also, just with a glance, I could look at the timer, a huge uh, timer. What happened, the timer used to tick and midway, the timer stopped. There was a malfunction. I could see that the moderators were getting apprehensive because unnecessarily they were messing up a speaker's chances. But I continued as if nothing happened. And I think I remember I even cracked a joke about uh, this um, mishap. When I won the first prize, the chief judge said, it was not just the content of the speaker but the ability to remain calm under pressure. I think that's a valuable lesson that I've learned. And that is going to separate the boys from the men or the girls from the women. Whatever be the case, continue with your topic, unmindful of all these technical disturbances. Now coming to the contest in today's environment, there are many things can, that can upset you because you're doing it online. A polite request to all of you, of course, you are all uh, much better tech savvy than me. Make sure when you're taking part in the contest, you do not have a Wi-Fi which is shared by the family. Because the speed may be drop out or if there is a power failure and you're going to get cut in between. Try to get a data pack exclusively for that day, 2GB or 4GB, I know you know better, Make sure that is not being used by anybody else. So you don't have to be worried about 
uh, frequent power cuts or anything for that. Of course, make sure that your laptop is also sufficiently. This is a lesson that I've learned over many uh, contests, I mean, many contests. The second thing, Vanita made a very important remark. Uh, don't be shy of going on stage. Most of the people find public speaking itself daunting. And on top of that, the table topic becomes even more daunting because we think the focus is on you. We think the audience is all looking at us. But do you know something? The audience is not worried about you. The moment the topic is announced, most of them are thinking, how will I handle this topic? And they secretly admire you for taking up the challenge. So the focus is not about you. So once you get this cleared, then things will be much, much better. Now, because we're going to talk about the contest, let me tell you the simple rule book. What does the rule book say? Now, if you've been part of a club where a typical toast, a table topic master comes and you know, brandishes his or her knowledge about topics, gives a real tongue twister or a tough topic and looks at you triumphantly and says, see, I got you. Now, don't worry. Toastmasters does not advocate such complex topics. Uh, just give me a moment while I'll share, share, uh, share screen and tell you what the rule book says about table topics. I hope you're able to see this. The topic shall be of general nature, reasonable length, shall not require a detailed knowledge, and shall lead to an opinion. So as you can see, it can be a simple topic like when I woke up this morning. It all depends on your ingenuity to convert this in a creative manner or an offbeat response. It is not that you should not have any knowledge about the subject, but nothing very, very uh, specific, not very complicated. So with that, uh, I'm sure you can, your level of confidence will go one step higher. Now let's now look at on what basis you're going to be, although you know all this, I just want to highlight so that you remember, and then we can continue with the tips and techniques. Just a minute. So content gets 55%. So find out, just note this, opening, body, close, organization, smoothness. A lot of importance is going to be given for structure. And I'm going to talk about the structure. What are the different ways in which you can sequence your points? Logic, directness, enthusiasm, achievement of purpose. Now, many times earlier, much before the districted uh, facility that we have now, people used to come and speak on just aim for one particular joke. And because that was the highlight, they used to walk away with the first prize. Or some people used to have just a string of jokes or a string of anecdotes, nothing connected to the topic. But finally they would say, as the topic says, you know, it, it used to be, uh, you know, very ineffectual, but since the competition was also lacking, they used to walk away with the prize. But now I think a lot of, uh, quality of judging has improved tremendously because of the various uh, training programs. So now we are able to look at a script. Do you have some structure? Do you have some control over the subject that you're talking? Not deep knowledge, but some kind of intellectual control. And of course, the other things are appearance, body language. This is something uh, that is, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you what else is required, which is not as important as Well, voice appropriateness, you're already expected to have. This is taken as hygiene. So unless you clear this, you're not expected to come on a stage. When I say uh, grammar, I'm not asking you to speak Shakespeare's English, but at least make sure you're coherent, you articulate well. So this is the importance that Toastmaster gives for the contest. So now you know how to do this in an effective manner. Okay. Before I spell out all the details, the first way to prepare for the table topics contest is practice, practice, practice. 
you may say practice and contest is an oxymoron no i will not and why today in today's circumstance practice is going to be the easiest thing that you can commit i know a person whom i'd like to address as mother owl she is a nocturnal human being and at any time of the night you will find that she is gallivanting around continents attending toastmaster clubs in any room at 1:45 am you will see her whatsapp message attending a toastmasters meeting in outer mongolia or ecuador and coming out with reports i many of you may know her i think she is a very famous uh, area director of your district called nitasha bajaj kumar i also know her a bit because she is the vpe of our club and the incoming president which she is going to take charge on sunday tremendous energy i hesitate to call her nocturnal person because even during day time she has the same energy you may want to check with her how does she manage or uh, she may have a compendium a list i think shortly she is going to hit uh, visiting 100 clubs if she has not already crossed now the good point is sitting at your cabin you can visit as many clubs as possible only willingness and the energy is required and get your uh, and make sure you get to speak in the table topics and especially for table topics i'd like you to uh, attend as many clubs in singapore as possible why singapore because many of the singapore clubs have a specially designated table topic advisor since navin has some experience in singapore clubs he can give you a list i've attended at least four clubs and i tell you their feedback is amazing because it is not left to the ge it is left to one exclusive person who will analyze threadbare and that will be of enormous help for you so try to attend all these clubs take part in the uh, table topic so you get different view points and there is no better preparation than practice so please take this uh, seriously then let's come to what do they expect in the context context from my experience and watching uh, multiple winners in the district first thing is context just because you have the gift of the gab many people think i can just say what comes to my mind maybe verbal dazzle with a lot of hefty phrases and zap the audience and they think they will get the prize or whatever but please like the americans say cut the crap and get to the point context is nothing but cutting the crap and getting to the point so make sure it doesn't matter even if you pause for 2 to 3 seconds to absorb what the topic is all about and then stick to the context don't unnecessarily vacillate then that will give the impression that you may have uh, excellent fluency but you are not sticking on to the context the second important thing is structure now many people ask me in fact i had this doubt uh, in the beginning how does one develop a structure when it is supposed to be spontaneous speaking now here is uh, some of the tips that i can give you any topic that is given to you please do it this way problem solution the topic alludes to a problem and here i am here with a solution that is a very nice way of putting things always it's a good idea to personalize an incident if at all it clicks why i am telling you to practice because whenever you think of a topic and you think that you can connect with an audience i mean incident it becomes easy for you to connect so try to have a personal story or the easiest way is pros and cons i i agree with the topic to certain extent because of these factors but have you considered the ill effects of this so pros and cons and finally your view otherwise past present future it can be pandemic it can be the way we work the work culture previously we had to travel 3 hours a day to visit our places today we are sitting at home tomorrow it could be hybrid or some so past present future is a good way to organize your topic or micro macro this is how we do it in bangalore this is how we do it in karnataka this is how we do it in india and of course the world or macro micro yet another uh, useful technique is you don't have to necessarily agree with the topic the proposition i've seen many uh, contestants saying oh that's an excellent topic i fully agree with the topic 
maybe you're gaining time nothing wrong not that you don't have to agree with the talk but if you can have a di divergent viewpoint now you are you give a fresh perspective now typically there are 10 contestants and by the time you reach the fifth or sixth speaker you must have noticed that almost all ideas are uh, repeated because immediate thinking uh, goes in that way so one other important technique that i have practiced and was considerably successful was reject the first idea that comes to your mind because let me tell you statistically it is proven that at least 60 to 70% will be speaking only in a similar pattern so is there something else you can start with which will attract the attention think about it and this comes only by practice or these are some of the uh, techniques of course if you have many more we can have a small discussion once i complete my presentation the second thing after structure comes intellectual control i'm not saying that you have to have deep knowledge in the subject but how can i have that versatility to speak on any subject here is a quote by dr rajdeep manwani who's won the table topics contest at the district level not less than 5 times you know what he says a good reader in private is a great speaker in public and if you listen to him you will understand the truth of this statement he's been able to repeatedly win because of his excellent reading habits what happens when you read quite a lot the quotes the quips and the anecdotes are already stored in your mind so here is an excellent chance for teachers because he is a teacher himself trainers facilitators who have an opportunity to repetitively use all these teachings in their classes you have a much better chance because something will immediately click and you'll be able to connect with the audience in a prepared speech if you come out with a quote no big deal because they know that you've taken time to uh, prepare but in a table topic if you are able to come out with a quote spontaneously i think the credibility moves up very well everybody may think wow that is a spontaneous response but only you know that you taken so much of time to prepare in fact i used to have one particular quote as a standard in a standard format and any topic i used to sum up you know put it inside like uh, dr c k prerala spoke it is not the best practice it is the next practice and i think at least two major contests i've been able to win the prize because of using this quote i think after that same audience they knew so i said uh, better not to do the same thing they will realize so do you have a nice short quote which is by a, a familiar person which you can drop off appropriately but you must be able to link it not just for the sake of saying it in the at the club level i think 10 years ago any topic that was given to me i used to start like this i don't feel like answering this question because i've heard that at times it is better to keep your mouth shut and let people wonder whether you're a fool rather than open it and remove all doubt and then go on to say because this gives me time to think about the topic but i'm not going to be even if you think i'm a fool i'm not going to stop i am going to start speaking but be careful after the second or third time the audience will know that you're trying the same stunt and they even disqualify you from the table topics contest or at the club level of course now here is something that i want you to be careful about the first thing is called as the halo effect and to narrate to give you an example dr arubindo kiriyakare i'm sure many of you must have heard he is a part of d121 i think he was taking part in the first time in a district level i mean he had crossed all the hurdles and i think some near him were saying hey you know something pk ramesh and kvm kishore are competing wow and all that. and it seems uh, arubindo kiriyakare innocently asked them who are they not out of arrogance not out of impudence he really did not know who they were because he was just a month old in toastmasters why am i telling you all this there will be enough people to scare you with the halo effect saying that these are ultimate guys you can't do anything but in that same contest i was really shocked to note and pleasantly shocked to note that dr arubindo kiriyakare came first tk ramesh was second and kvm kishore third 
So don't think just because there are champs competing, you have no chance. Believe in yourself because if you're able to master the moment, I think anybody can crack the uh, table topic. Just be uh, off from these guys. In fact, I'd like to relate the parable of the deaf frog. I'm sure many of you must have heard this. Uh, some four or five frogs were caught in a dry well and some tried to climb, but they fell down. But there was one frog which kept on climbing relentlessly and all the other frogs were saying, no, you will never make it. You will never make it. But finally, the frog did make it. And you know, the frog was a deaf frog. So you don't listen to the negative influence of people who are trying to discourage you and say, this is not meant for people like us. Now, that does not mean that you don't listen to sane advice. I'll tell you the opposite side also. Now, let's say you're a famous speaker at the club level. And invariably, you win prizes at every contest. You're a superstar. You gain so much of credibility that even if you start by saying, my name is Chandil Kumar, people laugh and they applaud. Because they give you, they put you up in a pedestal. And we make a mistake thinking that uh, area level and the division level, we will easily see through. But I've seen many superstars of clubs not being able to win even the third place in an area contest. So be uh, cautious optimism. That's what I will say. And the, wh while I say you should not be, you know, overawed by the giants uh, in the competition, at the same time, don't be too complacent and think the level of preparation for the clubs is just enough. I can wing it. It does not happen because people come from different perspectives. Then you also need to be very uh, particular about the topical humor or what subject is relevant for a particular audience. I was in the division contest when our district was united in Hyderabad and there was a first prize winner who simply zapped the audience with his uh, examples in Urdu and Hyderabadi Telugu and he was a huge hit. No wonder because it was all completely designed for the local audience. However, as he started progressing to the area level, again it was in AP so nothing much happened. At the division level, he was a flop because trying the same thing again. So you must be aware of what the context. That's why I put context as the first. Do you know what you're talking about? Do you know the entire environment? What will work? What will not work? So if you do a test, again, I'll come back to practice. If you just gauge uh, where are they getting excited, where do you get the appropriate response, that will also help you in a large way. Allow me to show one more picture. I'm going to show just one more picture. Table topics, you hardly get two minutes. There is something in any kind of public speaking, I'm sure uh, many of you are aware of this. There is something called as primacy and recency. The audience remembers what you say in the first five or 10%, and they also remember your parting shot, your parting message. For example, Netflix founder Reed Hastings, you know how he opened the presentation. He came and said, sleep is our competitor. It was a completely different kind of opening. He did not talk about Netflix, the dominance in markets, nothing of that sort. Sleep is our competitor. If we are able to produce interesting and engaging content that the average audience or consumer is able to keep awake for extra two to three hours, that is our success. Are we doing it? So, you know, that was thought provoking. He, what did he do? He also gave some examples and before closing also he came up with a punch. So one of the things you must be able to catch the audience's attention, open with a real good uh, remark or conclude with a very memorable message, challenging, or some shocking statistics, or a very short anecdote, or uh, urging them to act, or asking a question, you will find that you have a much better way of connecting with people. I also want to talk about the occupational hazards that you will face. The likely things that can happen is your mic bounce out. So there is nothing much you can do about this. So just be aware. I mean, like I already told you, make sure that 
nothing goes wrong. Sometimes, and of course, this is meant for the organizers, not for the contestants. Please make sure you select a people who can pronounce each word of the topic clearly. In fact, in one of the district level contests, three speakers misunderstood the topic and it was a total fiasco. So make sure people have a neutral accent so that you are not at a disadvantage in trying to get into all this. Okay. Uh, this is a very familiar technique that I advocate, not just for speeches, for any kind of speech. In all the techniques that I told you, if you're able to infuse humor, in, please note the word is infuse, not impose. Don't think that I have to make the people laugh and say something inappropriate, uh, people will see through. But if it comes as an afterthought or as a part of the script, I, I'll tell you the response is tremendous. You know, even the judges uh, appreciate that humor is not easy and it will be good. The next thing, as far as the contest is concerned, is don't worry about your order of speaking. I lost in a district level contest because I was flustered because I was, uh, I had the first spot. Actually, it doesn't make a difference. In fact, if you have the first spot, you can make a much better difference because the audience will be hearing your view for the first time. And if you're able to effectively speak, you can create much better impression. But what I thought was psychological barrier that I, how nice it would have been if I, I could have gone fourth or fifth. And that initial lack of confidence definitely let me down. Now, this is not to demean my the winners. Of course, they did a fabulous job, nothing else. But you must not make sure, you must make sure that you don't become a barrier yourself and by becoming coming first, last or whatever. I've seen many people, even the judges are kind to the first speaker who's able to attract the attention of the entire audience because that requires skill. That requires tremendous skill, if you ask me, not just skill. And uh, okay, but to conclude, I have a simple technique because I thought uh, we'll spend more time discussing rather than me talking because uh, that will be much more useful if you can tell me the practical difficulties you face or any of your thoughts and maybe we can try out some topics that will make it much more interactive rather than me giving you some gyan. So the simple thing is keep an observant eye, watch out for what happens uh, current topics. So if you're able to touch upon a current topic which is fresh in the memory of people, immediate connection is established. And please make sure you keep referring to this. And because, uh, like I told you, if you're able to attend many Toastmaster clubs and experience speaking in many topics, you can yourself do a small audit. How did I do? Did I do well? Uh, what, what, where did the people enjoy the most? Why was the audience lukewarm? Of course, in the virtual environment, it is very difficult to gauge. That's why I really miss the physical environment where you at least know or there is laughter or there is encouragement or the audience is glum. So you know that you've not made any uh, mark at all. But if uh, that is the case, so how the virtual mode being that much more difficult, I just want you to make sure your your voice, the tone is so lively. Oh, sorry. No, no, though mine is enough to practice, don't worry. If you seriously practice for Do Maine, you will crack any kind of a, a table topic contest. Well, in good humor, please don't mistake me. Yeah, uh, this is, uh, but I would like to end with what uh, Vanita suggested. Be yourself. Just because somebody is able to do some slapstick and make people laugh or they have a particular pattern, don't follow that. Whatever comes to you, whatever is in your nature, please do that. It doesn't matter if you don't win. Always your motto or your aim should be, did I improve the quality of the competition? Keep that in mind. Just go and enjoy yourself and you will see that you will make a much better difference or rather much bigger difference. If your focus is only on one, two, three, let me tell you, you will not uh, immediately be able to respond to what is happening. So I think uh, I'll stop the formal part here. Let's have a chat because we still have about 30 minutes. Any questions, uh, anything, uh, I'll be happy to share and we can have a dialogue and think that's what will make it more meaningful. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And yes, and we will throw it open for
for questions. Naveen, is that okay? Yes, sir. Thank you yes. so very much, sir. Uh, and uh, I'm sure just like uh, Lord Byron said, when water meets its master, his team blushes. Likewise, I'm sure our Toastmasters yes. in D121 would have blushed with new ideas and a new horizon altogether. So, my dear friends, my dear fellow Toastmasters so. were here, as <laughs> per our guest uh, teacher, there is one sentence he has said, CK's teacher has said that if you ask a question, you are a fool for five minutes. And if you don't ask a question, you are a fool for life. So let's all ask our questions. We have half an hour with this great encyclopedia. Can we start? Can you please uh, personal tech or, you know, you can put it on the chat and we'll take it up from there. Yeah. yeah. On the chat, we have uh, presence of mind or sense of humor demonstrated. That was, I think, what serves um, how you handled the Do Mahina and how to induce humor oh. in table topics. Sir, the question has come from uh, Nihan yeah. C. Yeah, so over to you, sir. How can we induce humor in table topics? Yeah, please. No, no, that was a question, is it? Yes, that was a question. How can we induce humor into a table topic session. How to infuse humor in uh, table topics? Uh, uh, it's not that you have to inherently uh, be uh, blessed with a sense of humor. Uh, if you're able to attach some kind of a significance, something, uh, and this comes out of practice, let me tell you, it is not easy. Because what happens in table topics is I'm more worried about speaking logically, uh, speaking with the structure. Uh, coming out with a story point because the 55 points is reserved for logic and things like that. But you must also notice that there is, there is heavy slant on engagement. How to use humor is a topic for a separate session altogether. The ability to see things in a lighter manner that has to be developed as you uh, start speaking. So I may not be able to give a point blank answer, but if you can do some demo, give me a topic and let me see how to use. Just give me a topic, uh, whoever asked that question. I'll make an attempt, no guarantee, of course, yeah. So, Master Nia, could you please give a, give yes. uh, DTMCK a topic. Uh, topic? Great. I'll tell you what, yeah. Yeah, how to solve the waste problem. How to solve the? Waste problem. How to solve the waste problem. Okay. Now, I'll have to define what is waste, first of all. Uh, what is waste for you may not be waste for me. You know, the garbage that you dump, there are many people who use this as manure and make money out of this. So, how to not to waste is something different. But there are people who also waste a lot of money by just ordering and then throwing food on the streets. So we have to curb that first. But my wife says, you must not show your son too much of affection. Because she says that all that affection is wasted. They are not going to go give you back any gratitude. She says, if you want gratitude, go buy a dog. Don't show it on your kids. That is wasted energy. Instead of that, let us go on a tour. Let's have some fun. Look after ourselves. We've already brought them up. Let them have a decent life. God bless them. So wasting acquires different dimensions when you talk about this. And then I don't know. Yeah, thank you. I would like to add uh, once this yeah. uh, topic was asked in a club meeting. Oh, was a very okay. humorous person was there. Okay. Uh, even though we asked the question about waste, immediately said, yeah, I have a big waste problem. My waste is so big. So he talked about his waste. <laughs> He took a of his face. Yeah. Yes. That's, yes. that's what. That's what presence of mind is all about. Yeah. You're, I'll Thank tell you. you because you mentioned this. Uh, I don't know whether I mentioned this in the earlier session. Uh, let's see how many of you can attempt this. Uh, some of you might have heard this, so I don't want to hazard. But let me just try. My parents are in the iron and steel business. My mother irons and my father steals. Anyone, just take a chance. My parents are in the iron and steel business. My mother irons and my father steals. If somebody's heard this in some other 
uh, workshop, please don't let's uh, give a chance for all the freshers who are hearing it for the first time. And just keep what Nainan said just now. That is the clue. Just try. We were not here to give you marks or something. You can unmute. They can unmute themselves, uh, Naveen, or they have to use only the chat. I, they can unmute. Sorry. I heard Nainan speak. Unmute. Can yeah. Can yes. I try, sir? Please, please. My mother uh, do ironing work. Yeah. And she earns for uh, our family. Yeah. She is passionate about ironing the cloths and uh, serving uh, others. Yeah. But the father, he steals uh, the money she earns uh, through ironing. Correct. And uh, she wastes that money, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Sir, can I try? Veera here. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yes, sir. Uh, my mother, she irons out all the differences that occur in our family. Uh, okay. And my uh, father, he is very romantic. So he tries to steal kisses from his wife. Oh, wonderful. Let's give a good round of applause. You see, uh, normally, uh, when you say steal, the first thing you will think is, the, the, that's why I told you, reject the first idea that comes to your mind. My, father, my mother does hard work. It looks as if my mother is working hard and my father is uh, doing, uh, you know, she's, uh, he, I mean, he's going and uh, wasting all the money that uh, he gets. But uh, just like what Veera did in my club, my friend Francis uh, turned the topic and said, my mother irons out her difficulties. I mean, I, my mother irons out our difficulties and my father steals the show in office with his performance. But even this was very romantic, you know, steals kisses. So uh, I think uh, you must have a very proactive attitude to any topic. Uh, that's when uh, good ideas come in and that's when the humor will also come in. Vera's response had a bit of romantic and we were able to smile, isn't it? That is important. Yeah, great. Okay, here is one more topic. Uh, let's see who uh, attempts this. Wrong number said a familiar voice. Wrong number said a familiar voice. Just think. Okay, before that, uh, Vaishnavi Prasad has asked a question. Should we take a side when given a topic or can we speak in general? Will the latter be looked down by judges? No, not at all, Vaishnavi. See, uh, like I told you, you can take uh, one particular side and said, in my opinion, I feel, see, that's why if you look at the evaluation guidelines, any evaluator who says your speech was fantastic, uh, that is a fa fallacy. Because if you say your speech is fantastic, somebody will get up and say, no, I thought that was one of the lousiest speeches. But if you say, I felt this was a fantastic speech, who can question you? Nobody, that is your view. So you can say, take a side and say, I feel, why are we talking about all this? This is what I feel. Or the safer ways, these are the positives in my opinion. These are the, the pros and cons. Of Nothing wrong. You can speak in general also. This is how I feel. But uh, there has to be an affirmative view. That's what the judges are looking at. You cannot do here or there. You must make some kind of a distinction. That's all. Yeah. Does that answer your question, Vaishnavi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very much. Thank you. Ganapati Devapa says, do we practice by writing small scripts or just speaking? It depends on what stage you are in Ganapati. Earlier, or I would recommend that everybody does a mind map. You know, you know the mind map, isn't it? The topic is on, um, let's say, wrong number. Say the fresh, I mean, familiar voice. The topic, uh, the pro uh, points are wrong number and familiar voice. Is there a connection between these two? Just jot down thoughts. When I say writing script, please don't get into the, get into the habit of writing word by word. Don't write down every word because memorizing that will lead you to problems. You forget one word and you'll go bonkers. Better to memorize ideas. What am I going to say? Put one idea and rehearse the 
points. The next idea, that's it. But don't get into writing the whole speech because people have tried to do that and they've been uh, miserable because one small mistake and everything will go for a toss. Okay, Nainan says, you mentioned about uh, rejecting the first idea coming to your mind. Can you explain with some examples? Okay. Now, in one of the district contests, the topic was uh, to tide over the imperfections of life, we need to build a bridge. Something like this. Okay. The key words were imperfection and bridge. Speaker after speaker came and said, yes, life is not fair to all. We have happiness, we have uh, sadness, we need uh, uh, strength, we had anchor. It was in a predictable pattern. That's what everybody thinks. But one person, one person said, who said life is imperfect? I refuse to acknowledge that. Just look at the Facebook posts of your friends. Everybody's having a gala. Of course, this was pre-pandemic, okay? Everybody's having a gala time. People are going on tours. People are doing this. And one of my IT colleagues in Bangalore, she made a remark that she took the bus to the office in Whitefield. And there were 360 remarks. How cute, how sweet. I wish I were with you next to the bus. When the whole world thinks traffic is a problem in Bangalore, uh, my friends think it is a sweet experience. Come on, who says life is imperfect? And when is a bridge required? Only when you have to cross something. I say that there is nothing to cross. We are all living in a world of make-believe and honey. It was completely different. He took a completely different viewpoint. So that's what I meant. Because uh, speaker after speaker will be predictable. Uh, Swarna Lata says how important it is to include personal, I'll tell you frankly, personal stories are the best way to attempt a topic because the moment you give some generic references which everybody knows, uh, yes, they may appreciate, but the real strength will come only when you personalize your story. When I talk about my story, when I talk about my college, when I talk about my school, I can be much more, I don't have to invent because it happened with me. Always, always use a personal story which can link to the topic. Yes. Can we use very random made up uh, statistics? Should we? It all depends on your luck, uh, Kunal Gupta. If the audience buys your bluff, then you're lucky. Otherwise, they'll call your bluff and say, this guy's just, uh, <laughs> you know, shooting from his mouth. Be careful about all this because today, I think a lot of uh, judging is also becoming mature. Uh, you have to be very uh, slightly sensitive unless you have made such an impression that they are very uh, not willing to, uh, they're willing to ignore one or two uh, sentences. But if you're using this as the main plank, then be careful because people will know. TT audit, can we have it as a new role to improve ourselves? Yes, very much, uh, Naveen. Uh, who asked? Yes, uh, please. I'm sure you have experience in Singapore. They have an exclusive TT evaluator. What we have done in our club is uh, the, uh, the general evaluator uh, all, uh, keeps some kind of evaluation for the uh, table topics. Makes it a point to evaluate table top uh, speakers. If he or she is not able to evaluate everyone, at least people who have made a difference. But I would strongly urge to have a separate TT evaluator, you can never underestimate the uh, improvement that you have, especially in to topics. Could you please give an example of how you used mind map approach uh, when you got a to topic? Okay, uh, Reno, just give me a topic now. That is better because I am not able to recollect which topic, how and all that. You're challenging. Yeah. Your challenging moment. My challenging moment. Okay. First thing is, I immediately start thinking, should I talk about my academic challenges, my relationship challenges, or my professional challenges? So immediately, I feel that I, I combine both academics and uh, what we call business. I say, when I did my engineering, I was academically challenged. Okay, but my father told me that was not the real uh, yardstick for somebody to be successful in business. Again, when I got into a business, I failed miserably. Then my dad said, I was known as Kumar at home. 
and he uh, not that to encourage but he said something very remarkable he said kumar's business has failed but kumar has not failed so i chose something which i love and that is public speaking training and talking and i'm grateful that i took up this because i've never had a chance to regret my uh, position now yes sometimes challenges are to mend your ways or to make sure that you get into something which you love so the mind map immediately connected me to my academics and my business how i can come out with a message how, if possible add some humor the first one was an attempted humor the academically challenged and then i go to the business and even in business i say uh, my business turned out to be a non profit venture when i started it was not meant to be anyway which means i made such a big mess of my business that uh, i lost everything then i came to public speaking training and i realized this is my strength right so you have a bit of humor you have some personal story and you also have something authentic which vanita talked about i am not saying that abraham lincoln came up because of this and my own story my vulnerability i am willing to admit that i am weak and how i got over instead of projecting myself as a champ all the time that really you know resonates with many of the audience and many people will say hey he is talking about something which i also went through which means there is hope for me also yeah does this uh, uh, help yes, thank you so much thank, thank you so much asma sheikh says apart from at attending other club meetings is there any other way i can prepare for tt contest okay if you feel uh, preparing there if you have a small circle give them or take uh, try to get uh, the previous topics in uh, division or area contest and uh, try to have a close circle of friends who can shoot these topics to you i mean have a small virtual conference or if they can visit you uh, ask them to shoot and then have one toastmaster who's your mentor or someone who can actually evaluate you. where did you go wrong was your content okay was your delivery okay what went well what did not go well maybe some humor how how was the structure all these points you can uh, have a, a good circle of friends i mean other other than that i don't see because for uh, topics you need at least minimum five or six people and somebody to listen to you and somebody to say how it affected them that's the but uh, take it from me best way is to attend those virtual meetings pradyumna koduru when we speak something humorous can we also laugh along with the audience be very careful don't my sincere advice is don't because surprise is the element of humor i'll tell you why i made the mistake I, in my club i said <laughs> look here i am going to tell you a joke then one smart guy got up and said ck you tell us what you have to we will tell you whether it is a joke or not you got it so don't uh, but say it with a straight face why am i'll tell you why also now if they laugh it's a jackpot if they don't it was not meant to be a joke anyway and you can carry on as if nothing happened now what happens especially in table topics you really think that the audience is going to crack after listening to this joke crack up but nothing happens it will not affect you if you have not given any hint that this is going to be a joke so say it with a straight face and if it laughs then you join the fun then you should not be glum then the audience will think they are stupid laughing at your joke right yeah Yeah, got it. I got it. Okay, wrong number said a family voice. Can I speak about it? Yeah, please, please. Every time I called my crush, he said wrong number. So I choose him to be my wrong number for the rest of my life. Okay. Okay. Great. Continue. Continue. Interesting. talk a bit about your quality also okay so how did this affect you so i moved on yeah. and i tried to be a wrong number to someone but yeah. one day i found the right number and we chose to be friends okay thank you okay. great now in a topic uh, so you are starting on a very proactive note so what now some people you know uh, take it a bit serious because this shows betrayal maybe 
a good friend suddenly behaves in a strange manner either because you got into financial problems or something so they try to convert this into a sob story but you took a very proactive so what here i'm not here to please only you or you're not the only one here i'm ready to uh, go ahead and yes yes in fact a similar topic uh, one of the uh, members did it but he used some hindi couplets uh, but of course he translated let me see if i can remember this ah yeah he said no problem sir if that person says wrong number uh, see what happened i went and told that girl aap aaye bahar aaye you know the meaning no uh, you know what is bahar it is uh, spring right so it will be like spring entering uh, my life but she said wrong number then what i said aap gaye hazar aaye so what if you go i will get thousands more in my life that was enough that completely turned the tides and you know something like what you did only thing is in a topic you must expand on this that's all bold a bit more humorous and Wrong then uh, yeah. sir you can also Wrong say number. that uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. i was borrowing i was want, trying to borrow money from somebody yeah uh, so as soon as he heard my voice he said yeah. wrong number okay okay yeah but that's the standard try, definitely everybody can will I think try, like sir? this but but john took it in a different uh, way right she took it very proactive so what i have enough of self esteem you are not the only uh, creep yeah. yes. i've seen many yes. creeps in my life yes. that's it beautiful yes, it gives yes. it shows the uh, self esteem also right so good, can i good. try sir pardon I'm Shoba from Anglo Toastmasters Club. Yeah, please, please Shoba. Yeah. yeah. Um, wrong number, but wow, your voice sounds so familiar. In fact, I was reminded of Amita Bachchan. How a nice day. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So again, uh, what Shoba is doing is she is getting very proactive about this. She is not taking it uh, in her mind. She is only complimenting the other person. you have to expand and this is where uh, ganapati devapa has asked a question what i want to say is over in a minute how do i extend it to 2 minutes i'll try to give you a simple formula see if it works this you can apply it for any kind of a topic i'll put it on the chat window uh, we call this as define describe illustrate define describe and illustrate now same wrong number now maybe john will say well you know we keep getting wrong numbers from strange people but this was a occasion where a familiar person said a wrong number okay you are just defining that's why you are trying to define what is a wrong number so when it comes from a familiar person you feel a bit upset but then this is you can extend this as description and an example last week my uh, the my crush or my date called me when i called him he said this then you can say now i'm not going to put, take this down because i feel life is much more than all this slightly expand this with one more example i remember my friend who did this and then you you may have a story very easy for me to say but it takes time to practice all this but remember the simple formula let me define the topic describe in a couple of words and give some example if you are able to give that example or a quote or an anecdote nothing like that because uh, people will really appreciate your presence of mind and this comes again by practice the number of books you read the number of anecdotes uh, that you stored up here all this will help simple one liner can make a difference uh, chandra sir can i uh, give a different perspective on the same topic this is alex Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, uh, you said one point, right? Reject the first idea that comes to your mind, right? So I'm eradicating that first yeah. idea that it's a number itself. So if I try, like uh, yeah. I was getting, trying to get something done from my mother, and she knows me yeah. well, and she say wrong number, yeah. try a different one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. This is something you can always uh, see. That's exactly what Vira was also telling. You know, I tried some. To, uh, he knows that I'm going to uh, ask for some favor. so he said wrong number and my mother mother is even more relatable because she can't uh, say that i don't recognize my son's voice 
but she also said wrong number because i've been pestering her for something or the other yes and you can expand on this you know you must end it on a positive note also i know many of you may think my mother is heartless but you know something she really has true love because when it comes to real things she will never uh, you know forget i mean she will never she will always stand by me and you know you can add some very personal incidents i'm mean, just giving an example you know my mother is such a uh, such a kind of lady whenever i say uh, uh, i don't want any more chapatis she makes the present chapati much bigger than usual so it is like me eating two chapatis when i say i want to eat one she increases the size of the chapati that is true love you know how she expresses her love some personal things which you can remember about your mom if you add it it will add value to the yes because nobody will expect uh, somebody to say wrong number and uh, mother yeah so there you want to try but actually this is not a you guys are not attempting table topics you got enough time to think about this <laughs> but anyway let's uh, give it a shot yeah please yeah pk vivek sorry pk vivek yeah. here Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. I have a query which I posted. Look like you missed those queries. So have yeah. you ever faced a situation yeah. when you were blank, completely blank with the table topic, and it still managed it well? Sir, very much, sir. My first attempt in uh, um, Toastmasters was a bomb. See, I used to because I won so many debating shields for my college, MIT, Manipal. So I used to think. Uh, Uh, speaking is no big deal my first meeting in la 1924 toastmasters normally they never used to give uh, topics to guests because they may not want to you know embarrass them but i got up and said i want a topic and i got a topic 20 seconds i stopped i didn't know what to say i thought why did i make a willing fool of myself uh, by opening my mouth but you know during the break Uh, one of the mentors came and said congrats i thought they were pulling my leg but what he said was no in toastmasters we normally don't throw topics to guests but you took on at least spoke and this is the spirit that we want to see in toastmasters let me tell you i've told this in multiple forums before that particular moment i decided toastmasters is the forum for me because there is so much of encouragement we are not trying to Uh, make world class speakers to win prizes only but we also want people to get rid of their shyness and uh, that so uh, the first ex- even otherwise i've got stuck i've simply said uh, i think this is beyond my scope and i've said nothing wrong it, it's not that you have to be an expert every time but by your frequent experience you will be able to manage comfortably yeah. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Okay, may I attempt this topic, please? There's many Mohan here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, many Mohan, division director. So yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. And the uh, thing good is, whenever you hear this term from a familiar voice, you know, wrong number and yeah. then the bang down, I should be the one who says I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of being that familiar voice. that bangs down the phone and this is a real life story where i okay. actually try to contact one of my friends yeah. and when they didn't respond i gave up and went away yeah. but later on they tried calling me back and oh. i did an abrupt wrong number and banged down the phone and then went back to my missed calls checked it out and then made the connect all over again but this is something that no. i have excuse me sir this is something that i have as a learning experience like whenever there is an absent mindedness that we have or something that we we have to reach out and sort of accept your faults accept the fault to say that you're sorry i'm really sorry that i did it and then go back and make that call so that is my take on the topic sure sure i uh, mean i i lost you in between so i am not able to comment exactly on what you said but yes uh, don't every time you don't have to take it as a loss you can also speak about a particular thing how it affected you and how you came out of it quick yeah perfect 
Yes, sir. Where is Joan of Arc? Oh, yeah, she's in front of me. Yeah. She's not yet Can got that red on. Oh, she, red is on. Yeah. No, one more minute, sir. Thank you so much. If it's still open for yeah, one okay. more person. Am Anyone? I the only one experiencing the drag? Or? Yeah. There is a drag, sir. A slight drag. I don't know. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Now, sometimes yeah. uh, the video also creates a bandwidth. Uh, okay. Uh, I must I once again a... thank the entire district one to one. Oh, thank you. Was someone speaking? Yeah. Yeah, if I can still take the chance, DTM Chandil Kumar. Yeah. While my team was celebrating my colleague's birthday at the office, we ran out of paper cups. Yeah. So in the midst of the celebration, okay. I tried calling the pantry. Yeah. When somebody picked okay. up the phone, I immediately said, send a few paper cups to the second floor immediately. In response, my CEO replied, wrong number. Oh. Check the number that you dial. <laughs> okay. That day, I added the pantry number to my phone oh. list. And I never oh, yes. made this kind of mistake again. Yes, excellent. So this is a, um, if you had mentioned this uh, immediately, this will be a quick on the, you had humor. This can happen to anybody and uh, it will be very well appreciated. Good one, Sudhir. Good. The only hitch is we should have had multiple topics to you folks because this one topic, all of you, we, we have enough time to think about this. Not taking the sheen away from the response, but uh, I wish I had, uh, you know, we had some session with four or five topics and get you to practice the techniques. Anyway, uh, no harm done. So in your clubs, I'm sure you can practice these techniques and become better and better. Good. I think this is a very creative response. So thank you all for such a wonderful uh, turnout in the first place and such warm hospitality to Mr. Narayanan, Vanita, and of course, uh, Naveen. Thank you all. Uh, wish you all the best. Stay safe and all the best in the contest. I'm not really worried about the contest. I want uh, most of you, to, all of you to become better and better in answering table topics at your club level or even in the thing. That is more important. Contests only some people win. But if you see a significant difference from you to from today till maybe after three months, that is the real uh, success. Yeah. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, CK, sir. And uh, I think the learning which we take back today is define, describe, and illustrate. Please note this down. And I think the next table topic we do is going to define, describe, and illustrate. Probably he's uh, done the same thing with the presentation. He described it. He, I mean, defined it. Then he described it. And he even illustrated to us what to do. Thank you so much, sir, for keeping us so light and yet tight to our seats. Thank you very much.